father was particularly lucky to have his entire savings account turned onto the principal of my secondary school, who was an expatriate. My father had a savings of 10,000 pounds. His first son, my senior brother Joseph, was studying law in the United Kingdom. He had finished his first degree in London School of Economics, where I also went to, and was doing his master's. My dad felt we were all going to be killed during the war, and he gave brother Aloysius, a Scottish man who was principal of College of Immaculate Conception, his entire passbook, and asked him to train my brother abroad with these savings, but he should not tell him that the money was his. Because of foreign exchange restrictions, Brother Aloysius could only take away 4,000 pounds from the money. He told my brother that this was a loan from the Marist brothers to help his education. My brother rented a house in, or rather bought a house in Maydeville, a flat in Maydeville in London. Those who know London know that it's a very rich area now. He and the son of the former president of Nigeria, who was his friend, Wachukwu Azikiwe, became painters. And they painted the flat and they rent it out. And they went to East London and hired a one-bedroom studio apartment where both of them lived. That flat that my brother bought, had he not been stupid to sell it, is worth over one million pounds today. But he sold it in order to finance his education. He got a master's degree, he got a PhD in law. And he came back and established in Western House and became a very prominent lawyer. But that 6,000 pounds that was left in the money, my father discovered it six months after the war when the manager of Barclays Bank then, which is now Union Bank, called him and revealed to him that he had 6,000 pounds plus interest which were not tampered with during the course of the war. My dad then decided to buy a Mercedes lorry bus. That time in the southeast, all the vehicles that were there had been used during the war and many had been cannibalized and the few that survived were smoking or hardly in any good condition to traverse state territories. There was no farming throughout the war. And a lot of people who were compressed in few communities where the war did not reach did not have enough food cultivated in those communities to sustain them. So all the food that were coming to the east were brought from the west and the north, principally from the north. And so all the transporters had made a lot of money transporting food. Daddy decided to buy a Mercedes 911 lorry. And my mother cooked a very delicious meat that the meal that evening to congratulate him. And the highest she could kill was a chicken. And she reserved the gizzard in our custom for my father and some of the precious parts. As, as they were clinking their glasses in the veranda, my, dad, my mom was thanking my father for making this investment because now she had three children who were either supposed to go to university or now due for university who couldn't go, including myself, my immediate senior who later became governor of my state, and my late sister who became a pharmacist. And my father said, you know, we've just made money for the drivers because there, we have no way of knowing how much he earned and how much he will bring back to us. I was astonished to hear this. And so, I said I was going to become a conductor. In the morning, I brought out my bag, and I went downstairs to inspect the car and to organize the driver and the conductor. And my mom said to me, where are you going to? I said, I'm following these people. She said, you're a foolish man. Go and drop that bag. I said, what do you mean? He said, I, I say I must go because I want to make sure that me and my siblings go to school. She said, oh, your father wants to use his son to make money. I said, Mama, you must go to confession to our priests. So this driver and this conductor are not people's children. So you and your husband can use them to make money, 
but you can't use your sword. And don't forget, I was a lieutenant in the war, and I was now audacious enough to confront my mother, having been exposed to chivalry. My mother was a little constrained by the fact that I antagonized her with God. And I, she shook her head and said, okay, come, let's go to my room. I need to pray for you. We got to her room. She was confused. She didn't know what she, she had called me to her room for. She gave me two uh, charms, one of which I'm wearing in my neck, and one of which is in my pocket. One is a chaplet, and one is a crucifix. And she said to me, the Lord will protect you. And I came on and jumped on the 911. And as we drove off, they told me she kept running after us and crying. But I went to Lafia, Akwanga, Bukuru, Jos, Mubi, Maiduguri. I was running down at hills when the vehicle was moving slowly and difficult to climb. And I was putting the wedge to make sure it doesn't roll back. And I was shouting, Oh, Shebe. It, my brother was in England, and when we wrote him letters that we were balancing 500 pounds every two weeks, he and one of his late friends, Felix Okoye, went to the Netherlands and bought a Volkswagen bus and sent it to us. I went back to daddy and said, I want to also establish the revenue pattern in this Volkswagen bus. And every 6 a.m., those who understand it but will know what I'm about to say now, I went to a place called Ninth Mile Corner, where the vehicle was loaded to drive it to Makodi and Otrupo. And I used to shout on the road, Nine Mile Otrupo, ten tension is on your diocese, so Otrupo by a Nine Mile Otrupo, ten tension. Behind your home delivery, if we have a boss now, so so. I became a driver from being a conductor. I graduated into a driver. And don't forget, my father was a parliamentarian, a parliamentary secretary, and a minister. But it didn't make me not to realize that my family's survival was at stake with only 20 pounds, and that I have to give up my best. Many of you, because you are privileged parents, think you have no reason to suffer. You come home on holidays, you won't even help your mother in the kitchen. You will not clean the house. You will not wash your father's underwears or his car. You are extremely conceited in your luxury that you do not think you can give a hand. If you don't give a hand in the home, how can you give a hand in the greater society? The second thing I want to say to you is about public service. Those of you who are in secondary school know that when you are found worthy to be a class prefect, a dormitory prefect, a senior prefect, a president of debating society, whatever responsibility is given to you in school, is a training for leadership. Take it seriously. Give it your best and your all. You never know when it will come to use. Now, I went into politics at a very early age. I became special assistant to president of Nigeria at 28. I became minister at 31. I was not catapulted there. I fought like a man in the trench.